So in this video, I want to talk about High School DxD Volume 8, as this is a compilement of short stories, and there are a multitude of short stories that take place after certain volumes, so I'll just quickly go over those before I get into the actual contents of what these are about. So the first one is A Work of a Devil takes place after Volume 1, Familiar's Requirement takes place after Volume 2, Memories of Opie, I'm just going to say that word instead of the other one, takes place after Volume 3, The Opi of Tennis takes place after Volume 4, Hell's Teach Azazel takes place after Volume 4, and of course, 300 Essays takes place after Volume 5. So it's a nice little compartment of little short stories, and honestly, some of these are really cool. Now, the anime does actually cover some of these, which is the first season itself, covers two of these. And there's kind of like a bit of a toss up here because one of these I was kind of like, eh, it kind of is covered, but kind of covered it in a different way. So the first chapter, which is the works, the work of a devil, which is to do with the contract itself and the, 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 the little romance series. This was honestly, wasn't my favorite chapter out of all of these, but it is a pretty cute one where Issei is struggling to get his first contract. And so Rias is like, okay, I'll come along, I'll help you out. She's very much nurturing, she's very much trying to help Issei, and of course the, the deal is, is that if he gets that contract, he gets to have a bit of fun with her. And then he meets a girl, they talk about the romance, how she has feelings for a guy, and Issei gives a recommendation of a letter to convey, convey her feelings. And I just think it's a really nice, touching little chapter itself. It's not my favorite because some of the others are just ridiculously funny, particularly my favorite would be the 300 essays, but this one was still really touching. But the thing that kind of stood out the most to me is Rius's kind of determination to kind of help Issei. Like she feels like, at least the way I perceive it, is that he's kind of falling behind. You know, Argy is kind of doing really successful. All the others in the group are, but Issei just isn't getting those contracts and I think it's just because he's so more relaxed he's not so pushy about the contracts and also the fact that things just kind of don't always go the way they do and he's more just a chill person like if I ever met Issei in real life I feel like he would just be a really good friend to hang out with like sure he's a little bit weird at times when it comes to Opie and his obsession with it but I just feel like he's someone that you could just sit with and chill and just talk about things that you like, a, that he also has a liking, like anime, manga, light novels, games, all of those kinds of things, and of course, you can talk about waifus with him, because he likes Opie, so I just feel like he's such a chill person, which is why he probably struggles to get those contracts, because he doesn't want to pressure too much, that's my thing, but Rias is very much determined to kind of help him to the point where, in the anime, Arkano does kind of make a note on it, as I, you know, you, this is something that you didn't do with anyone else, you're a little bit more, I wouldn't say pushy, because it's kind of the word that's in the back of my mind, but she's very much more motherly, even though she doesn't see him as like a childlike figure, but I mean, she does know in the anime that she kind of sees Issei as like a younger brother, but there's still those romantic feelings there, so I feel like it's just because Issei is still maturing, due to his lifestyle, but Rias is much more mature because of all the responsibility she's got to deal with. She feels it's upon herself to try and nurture Issei into these responsibilities, which I think is good, which ends in a nice little note. She ends up, that girl ends up confessing her feelings and they end up dating as per se. The second one, which is the familiar's requirement, this is where it's kind of interesting because I feel like the Opie tennis one which is chapters four of this, took some parts out of it because of the familiar's requirement. In the anime, there's a tennis game to go over who's going to actually get the familiars. And I feel like they took that from the actual tennis thing, but it's also very different. Like the Opie tennis has got like a gorilla in it, a Dolahan, and it's much more of a competition about doing some survey stuff and some research. So that one's much more different. It wasn't a too bad of a chapter. I, I feel like that was probably on the lowest rank of my favorites. Like it was the least favorite in this volume just because I didn't care as much. Particularly because 
I just yeah I, I I figured I would never see these other characters again so I'm just like eh it's fun but it's also was predictable as well because the gorilla in it I was kind of like I bet you it falls for Issei and lo and behold it did so it had a little bit of a nice comedic end to it for me I feel like they took part of that tennis chapter changed it to be about Sonar and her familiar members and then added it into the familiar's requirement for the anime and that's why but even in the even if you take all those changes out and you just focus on what the light novel covers there's some additional stuff in there and more emphasis on certain things like for example the sprite dragon uh, not dragon sorry the sprite familiar where it's like this big like bully man and Issa like freaks out about it it emphasizes on that a lot more in the light novels and the conveying of the feelings and how Argia saw it and there's a little bit more to that while the anime kind of brushes over it a lot more which to be honest I actually like the way the anime did it more in that sense because it's it's one of those where it's like it's fun because of the slime and then Issei getting zapped and he ends up never getting a familiar during that event but in the light novel it drags on a little bit more but also the tennis match I actually really liked what they did there because it has more fan service it's more emphasizing Rias and her her versus Riv Akano against Sonar and that so that tennis match felt better than in the light novels itself I know that would be a controversial opinion because I'm being critical of the light novels love the light novels but that's just one of those things I'm like you know what the anime actually did it better in my opinion so it is what it is now of course I talked about those two but there is a chapter in between called Memories of Opai which is to do with Issei's fond memories of his past and this guy that he met in a park where the guy goes on about Opai and that's actually the origin for Issei's obsession river which I think is probably my second favorite chapter in this actual thing itself the 300 Issei's is my favorite this one was probably my second and then after that it's it's kind of an in-between between the work of a devil and then Hell Teacher Azazel so Hell Teacher Azazel is just kind of fun but it's like, mm. and there's also one other chapter I forgot as well, which was the fun Grimmery family, which takes place after volume seven. But that one I was like, eh, it was fun. But some of these are just more s simpler, but more crazier. So the whole situation with the memories of Opai is just basically, they're having a discussion. They're talking about his fond memories. He goes on about this guy that he met way back that basically got him into Opai. And then he gets arrested and then just, that same day he's walking home all depressed and he meets the guy and everyone just thinks he's just weird and that guy's weird so it's just one of those where it's like you you know how it's gonna end but it's still funny to see how it ends because it's just like yeah it, it is what it is so the part to do with hell teaches azazel honestly this is the thing it, it is really actually hard to rank some of these because i was kind of thinking you know which ones are my favorite but hell size azazel is also really good as well because it basically goes into this idea of Rias and Argia wanted to make Issei a kid again but it backfired and it actually made them go back to a childlike state but it had a side effect because it made them acting more of a, like a childlike and then Issei ends up kind of being like the father role model for them and Akano kind of makes a reference about being the motherly type figure and then Issei gets this like whole delusional thing in his head about being you know married to Akano and having two little kids then he goes out with them and his friends think that Issei's actually been getting it on with Argia and Akano uh, not Akano Rias and they get jealous but Issei has to go through this whole long process of getting these stuff done to try and reverse it to then have the girls throw him into it and then actually make him go younger but he also maintains his memories and his state of mind and it's just one of those that was the whole plan the girls wanted to make him like a cute little boy again so they could have their fun and that is a callback to the episode or the part of the light novels where they're going through his photos when they're at his place and his mum brings out all the memory photos i think it's a really cute episode i still feel like 300 essays is just my favorite because of how stupid it is and i'll get into why but this one was just kind of fun and cute as well so yeah it's it's a, it's a high rank now 300 essays i'll get into this i love this this chapter the reason being is because azazel is doing some experimenting and he's like hey isai isai i want you to do this so he throws him into it makes 300 versions of isai and isai basically just runs around the school dress breaking everyone love it it, it honestly is just peak fiction at its finest 
most of the satire there. It's just funny because Azazel basically blocks it off so he can't do any more damage outside of it. And so they have to like defeat them all. And Akano's in a bunny outfit. And I'm just like, oh, it's just so good. Like they have to like do all these things to try and coax all these Isays to come out. And they're much more like crazier than what normal EC is like their 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 love for opi and you know the good stuff is much more heightened so they just go crazy and they use every dirty trick to try and get these Isais out to defeat them but it gets to a point where the Isai Isais work with the original Isai to defeat Azazel the final boss because he's the one that caused all this chaos which they basically wreak havoc on and then they do finally defeat all the Isais, they all fade away along with Azazel's. And the thing is though, he technically wipes all their memories of the 300 Isais, but doesn't wipe the memories of what the Isais did. It's basically a partial memory wipe. And that's the funny part, because then all the girls rock up at the actual clubhouse for Isai and just torture him. And I just, honestly, I think it's hilarious. I really want to see an OVA of that. I have watched some of the OVAs, but I've forgotten most of them from the anime. But maybe there is one of that, but I don't think there is. And it's just honestly, it'd be a really fun OVA to actually see. And it, it even though, yes, it takes place after Volume 5, it doesn't matter really. You could just have an OVA and be like, yeah, this thing happened at the school. And just kind of make it feel like it's timeless. So I would love to see more of these kind of OVAs where they are side story based. Because it'd just be fun, and while you wait for more anime-based content, you'd have it as well. So, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Have you read this volume, and what are your thoughts about each of the volumes? Because most of them I really enjoy. Some of them I'm just kind of like, eh, they're okay, but not as interesting. Again, you got to, like, if I rank them, it's like some of my favorites, some of my not so favorites. So, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What did you think of this volume? And of course, I will be continuing to read more High School DxD as time goes on. So, if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.